It's a barbell. <laughs> so we're here today on the River Trent uh, at Fiskerton. We're going to be trotting for some barbell uh, on the float today. So we're going to show you our setup, our bait, how we approach the swim. We've got master float angler Andy Field here with us who's going to show us uh, how he approaches the swim, how he sets up his float, uh, and just show you a few tips and techniques that he'll use and hopefully teach me on how to approach this swim and hopefully put some barbell on the mat. If anything else, we'll catch the sun. Happy fishing. So when people mention barbell fishing, um, especially on big rivers like the Trent, they will almost certainly go to a feeder, pellet, boilie and ground bait approach. And that is great, you know, when you're fishing at night, it's great even in the daytime. Uh, it's great in winter, autumn, spring, summer. But when you've got clear water and it's a bit low and the sun's high and those fish can see everything, if you're fishing a static bait, those barbers will come across that bait and they'll be an investigator for as long as they want and see everything and decide whether they want to eat it or not. When you're fishing a running bait, as in maggot on the float, that bait's gonna move past that fish and they have to make a snap decision on whether they're gonna take it then or not. And you know, if you're getting it right, they're gonna come up off the bottom, grab that bait and make, a, make their way away with it. And there is no better bait to fish in summer than a maggot and hemp concoction. So, you know, today we've brought with us 10 pints of maggot and 10 pints of hemp. Now, that sounds like a lot, it is a lot, but once these fish get feeding and you want to keep them on the spot and draw them up from down river, you need to be baiting up constantly. Oh, oh it's a purge. Oh. Do you want me to net it by hand? Come on. Pretty deep here, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Just like I was saying, pick up anything on double maggot. You know, while these are coming along, causing a bit of disturbance, oh, causing a bit of disturbance, it's going to get the intrigue of the bigger fish oh, to come upstream and uh, investigate and, and see what's going on. But we'll put this one back because it clearly doesn't like it. So where'd you have that one, Andy? It, that was quite far down. I think, uh, I think the, the, the bait washes down a little bit, doesn't it? And, and you, you, a lot of people will abort the, uh, the the trot before the end. And, and often you'll, you'll find like chub and perch and, and what have you sitting right back, especially chub. Mm -hmm. um, so every few casts I'll let it run right so through. So you can't see it. Yeah, yeah. And, so and, it's uh, a shadow. You, yeah, you, you get that feeling. <laughs> it's all, you, you, you've, you've, got your, you've got your chub or whatever it might be. So what are we doing? Are we doing like every half an hour we'll swap or yeah, every yeah. fish? Yeah, I mean, that's what I like about um, so every fish. Trying a, a float every <laughs> every now and again, you you just swap over and, yeah. and everyone gets a gets a go. It's it's quite fun. It's a sociable way to fish as well. Especially it is. Here. Do you know anyone sociable like a fish with? <laughs> <laughs> right, let's have a go. What we've got? Double red. Oh, double red. What's this? About ten foot. I would say about that. Yeah. Okay. Righty-ho. You feed. Yep. I'll feed. I'll fish. You fish. Can I have some hook bait, please? Of course. Can you put it on the hook for me as well? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it's quite delicate fishing as well. So, you know, a, si a size 14, 14. two maggots is, uh, is, is, a sm is a small bait for a, a big fish. Mm. Uh, it, uh, I think if, you, if we get a good one, we'll show how small double maggot and a 14 is in its mouth. I mean, Absolutely. You can get your fist in a big yeah. barbell trap, can you? You know, some of the bits of luncheon meat we use down uh -huh. on the Avon. Yeah, yeah. Huge. Yeah. yeah. Four, uh, four, four bait tins. I think that, that's what I like about it. it it's, it's delicate, intricate mm -hmm. um, and fishing. And it, it's making all the little changes, moving the shot, adjusting your depth. And... Oh, there's a fish. And like you said, you can catch Everything yeah. while the fish are, while the boy waiting for the barbell to come up. Another perch, isn't it? That roach. 
you just, you know, you're used to those hitting that fish and it just being a small fish, small fish, small fish, and then when that barbel comes yeah, along, yeah. it's something different. Isn't it? Rod hoops over. Oh. I notice you've got the clutch set quite loose. It, well, every time, every time. It's, it's easy to, to get caught out if you... Don't have time to react, do you? No, if you get snagged up out there and you tighten the clutch up and then you hook your barbel with a tight, tightened clutch, it, 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 they've gone off Game so over. fast, that they'll just break you. you know, I've, I, they'll, they'll break 10 pound line. I got a bit hungry. Not a lot of action on the float. Sometimes, you know, they do want that static bait. So we've just put a tip out just for half an hour, 45 minutes, have a bit of lunch, see if it throws up a fish, you know, let them come over that bait, investigate it a bit, you know, make that choice over whether they want, you know, static bait or a moving bait. I've just put two little uh, eight mil pellets on a hair, five foot, 10 pound fluorocarbon, uh, two ounce block end maggot feeder, um, 12 pound line, and uh, yeah, we're just waiting for the rod to hoop over. We're fishing it over the same feed that we put out for the float, so probably about 20 meters downstream, about eight meters off the bank. What flavor you got? Oh, cheese and onion. Open it upside down, that's bad luck. <laughs> Hope that doesn't spell the making to the rest of the day. Gave up on the float, which is never a bad idea, you know. If they're not having it on the float, then then you know move to move to something else. We put an awful lot of bait out. They're so strong, you know. Even even on like heavier gear, they are still so strong. Finally had one. Wasn't on the float. No, mid-afternoon. Got tired of putting the float through about five million times. <laughs> and he's put the feeder out and it's gone over in 20 minutes. About eight pound? It's about that, I would think Perfect, seven or eight pound. It? Beautiful condition. Never been caught before. Like they, they often, sometimes they just will not take a moving bait and uh, put a feeder out over where you've been feeding all day and you can often pick one up and you can eat a sandwich while you're watching your tip. You so. Always eating. Yeah. <laughs> That's my first barbel of the season. I haven't weighed it, maybe seven, eight pound, but lovely to get something uh, on a tough day. So let's get him back. Difficult one to say how big they are because they all fight so hard. Uh, often the bigger ones feel a bit heavier they don't um, they don't fight so kind of erratically you know the they, they hang in the water more but we'll have to we'll have to see Wow. Another one for Andy. <laughs> Two nil. Not a problem. Pop that hook. There you go. There you go. About the same size. What's that? Seven pound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Roughly the same, I would think. <laughs> <laughs> the that was the downstream rod. The first one was the upstream rod. But I've been lucky and fished the bit that we've been baiting all day. 
So uh, uh, right, yeah, uh, yeah. that's okay. probably why you haven't caught. <laughs> so maybe let's reel these in, get the float right out again, and we'll see if we can get you. We've got three hours left. Yeah, yeah. Plenty of bait. Yeah. Let's yeah. do it. Okay. We've had a couple of fish. Andy's had a couple of fish on the feeder, <laughs> fishing over the float line, so where we've been feeding all day. And he's had them within about 45 minutes of each other. So I think maybe it's a good time to get the float rod back out. The wind's dropped completely, so we've got perfect trotting water. So we're gonna try and catch a fish on the float now. Ooh. Round the session off, see if we can get a nice, nice barbel to end the day with. Oh, oh, ah! Do you want another go? <laughs> Give a few more. Oh, perchy, perchy. Like, Mike's gonna come up and take it. Nice. Fish are getting bigger, getting more bites. So if you've barbel fished in the past, you've probably fished the feeder, two pound, one and three quarter pound test curve, maybe a 6,000 size bait runner, 12 pound line, you know, three ounce lead, size eight hook. That's kind of the standard setup a lot of the time for, for big river barbel fishing like the Trent. But when you're fishing the float, everything gets scaled right back. So I'm lucky that I can wade today, which means I can fish just right off the end of the rod. So I'm fishing a stepped up float rod, uh, which it's got lovely soft tip, because as I said, we know we're catching not just barbel, we're catching chub, perch, roach, bream. Um, and I try and get away with the smallest reel I can because we're gonna fish all day. Ooh, we're gonna fish all day, you know, so I like to use a 2000 size. This is a Super Team FL in 2000. And it's a perfect little setup just to, it's really well balanced. Uh, and you don't fatigue through the day by holding it. <laughs> well, we've had a boatload of perch, some chub, load of roach like this, a few bigger ones. Can't seem to trap a barbel on the float. Uh, the fish that we have had have come out on the feeder. I don't know, last couple of hours, I think we're gonna get the feeder rods back out and try and snag a big one before, oh, before we pack up for the night. Chub, isn't it? I don't know what that is, Andrew. <clears throat> Get down there. That's the right line. Not in his head. It's a barbel. Well, it's not as small as I thought. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I don't know, I know, it's a bit long. Chunk. So, we come off the float, because we just couldn't get him to take the moving bait. 20 minutes on the feeder. Funny bite, went round super slow. It was almost like there's something stuck on the line. Hit into it. And this beauty was on the end. Probably about nine pound. Great big mouth, like huge. Look at that. Beautiful looking fish. Trent special. Oh, little blue mark on the bottom, which means it's been dyed by Calverton. So they can identify the fish, where the fish are moving to, how regular they're being caught. Yeah, I reckon we've still got time for a couple more. Get this one back. Absolute cracker to end the session with. As I said, might push 10. Absolutely perfect. Bronze poor torpedo. Such a strong fight. Super stoked. And uh, thanks for watching. And uh, hope you learned something. We'll get this one back.
be. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, add the rod right over. What a great fish! Got his dorsal fin up, giving us a wave, and that is what I'm going to do to him. Say, see you later. Now, time for the pub.